We've already talked about the reciprocal identities and also the uh, quotient identities, and now we're going to talk about the Pythagorean identities. And uh, there's actually three of these, so we're going to look at them. And the reason they're called the Pythagorean identities is because they're uh, derived from the Pythagorean theorem. So normally you do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, or leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. But once we uh, set up our trig uh, triangle, our right triangle, we can actually use adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. And basically what we're going to do for each of these is we're going to take your uh, Pythagorean theorem and rewrite it in a different manner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each thing and divide it by the adjacent side squared. So here we'll get one. I'm going to rewrite this a little bit and hopefully we'll understand uh, how I can do that. So I'm just going to put it as the fraction squared. So if it's opposite squared over adjacent squared, it's really opposite over adjacent squared, so kind of keep that in mind. So when we rewrite both those, we get something like this. Well, guess what? We actually know what these ratios are. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 1 plus opposite over adjacent. Well, that right there, that's going to be tangent. And the way you square your trig function, it's not your angle squared, it's the trig function. So it's tangent squared of theta is equal to, and then we have hypotenuse over adjacent. Well, that's cosine, well, it's the reciprocal of cosine, so that's going to be the secant squared of our angle. So that's one of our Pythagorean identities, you can see right here. And uh, now we're going to look to see how we can create the other two. So we'll start off by doing the other thing. Last time we divided by the adjacent side squared. This time we'll divide by the opposite side squared and see what we get. When you work this one, you get the adjacent side over the opposite squared. You get plus 1 is equal to the hypotenuse side over the opposite squared. So let's see what we have. Uh, here we're going to end up with, let's see, adjacent over opposite. That's cotangent. Plus 1 is equal to, uh, that's the reciprocal of sine, so therefore it's cosecant squared of your angle. So that is the second of our Pythagorean identities. And then lastly, we're going to divide by the hypotenuse squared uh, into all these. This is probably the most common one, the one you see most often when you're working in math problems. So we get the adjacent over the hypotenuse squared. Now even though those formulas are, you know, kind of something that you would have to memorize or something like that, you can easily recreate them. I'm not doing any crazy math that you guys wouldn't understand. I'm just going through and taking your Pythagorean theorem and dividing them all by each of the objects in the Pythagorean theorem. Adjacent over hypotenuse, that of course is going to be our cosine. And then the sine squared is equal to 1. And like I said, that's probably the one that's most common. But these could also be manipulated, so it's not just that the cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1. You could also say the cosine squared of your angle is equal to 1 minus the sine squared of your angle. Or you could say the sine squared of your angle is equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of our angle. So just like in any equation, we can move stuff from one side to the other. But those are the three Pythagorean identities.